Okay, we're recording, and I'm with uh, Carol Francis. Carol, thanks for coming on today. I really thank you for it. having me. Yeah, this is, I'm excited. And um, talk. To, you know, somebody was teasing me yesterday about saying about how often I'm excited about things. They said I'm the most excited <laughs> person they've ever met, and, but I am excited. Um, okay, uh, talk to us a little bit about where you are in your writing journey. Okay, well, the story I'm writing now is really a work in progress, um, but I've wrote other stories. Okay. Um, some are rough drafts, none of them are completed. And I really like this one I'm doing now. Um, and like I said, but I'm all over the place in it. So I thought it's time to settle down. Oh, but I started writing, going back and revising. Okay. And my computer crashed and I was writing on a tablet. Oh, I wow. Get, I couldn't get it back. So oh, I that's dropped a everything, walked away and thought maybe I'm more of a reader than a writer. Oh, But it kept, you know, nagging at me. So I went back and now oh, here I am. Oh, great. I'm glad you came back to it. That's exciting. And that's, I, I have lost work before because of digital complications. That is the most frustrating thing. It is, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I, it makes you feel, help, like it makes me feel helpless. Like I feel mm -hmm. like I've done all this work and now it's all gone. Uh -huh. It gives yeah. you that feeling that maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, oh, maybe this is some kind of sign. Yeah. But I'm really glad you pushed that feeling aside. And yeah. Well, I also am a member of the Fictionary community. And, oh, great. Um, and That's where Jessica Shane... Brody's. Yeah. Well, and Shane so... Miller works over there. Who does, oh, yes. Uh -huh. uh, does a lot of stuff with me. Mm -hmm. And he's yeah. shout out to Shane. He's fantastic. Yeah. He is. Yeah. The yeah. whole group is yeah, they've got a really solid crew over there. Mm -hmm. And it seems like a great, a really great community. Mm -hmm. um, and I did see fun. your interview with them too. So Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's uh, tell me about uh, the book you're working on. What's the, okay. just give me like a synopsis of what this book is. Okay, it's again, all over the place. It's a YA. Um, the book I'm trying to write is about a young girl who's 16 and really would like to have a friend I sort of started making her as having all these little chicks and whatnot mm -hmm. sort of really nerdy and then I thought no I don't want her like that um so she's looking for the friend in school she's really good at math and a teacher asked her to tutor a new student okay. so when she starts to tutor the a little bit debating is she going to do it or not because there's a lot of responsibilities at home and then there's this sort of tension going on with a brother who is drinking a lot and coming home drunk and that's where the second um, scene comes in um, so she tutors the girl she finds out as the tutoring they become good friends and that the girl is being abused by her husband uh, by her boyfriend okay so mel wants to wants to save her in a way mel likes to save everybody okay Oh, that's where I am. I had a lot of twists and turns and this and that, and it nice. just wasn't working out. Once I stuck it into Fictionary, it was like I saw everything that was just sort of wrong with it. So sort of yeah. started new. Nice. Um, I think that that's uh, I think that's a common journey for a lot of us is the like I had this idea I cranked well I mean I could I just I started like two months ago. I had what I thought was a fantastic idea for a book, and I got probably 10,000 words into it. And then I took a step back and I was like, I don't even know what's happening with this book. This is a terrible. So I had to throw it all away. I, I couldn't even, I couldn't salvage it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. You know, so and that's what I'm trying to do is use some of that old work. And it's like, oh, it's just, it's just not working out. Yeah. All right. Well, let's look at the piece together. You sent me chapter okay. two. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to share my screen with you here in a minute. If I can figure out how to do that. There we go. Um, so you can see it here on the screen. Uh, yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So part of what I really love about your writing, Carol, is there is a um, there's a beautiful simplicity to your language that builds a lot of intimacy in the text. So as we talk, I want to make sure you don't lose that because okay. it's very nice. So like for example, um, let me find a paragraph I really liked. Uh, let me come back up to the top because you've got these good opening paragraphs. Um, in the kitchen, Chick must have moved a chair across the floor, and I wondered if he tripped over it last night. The rest of the kitchen looks like it usually does in the morning. Clean, but with Legos, toy, cars, and trucks scattered around. Picking up a few misplaced Legos, I put them into a pile. 
away from foot traffic. So there's a nice, you can kind of feel in here, you're not using, you know, overly flowerly language. You're not, there's, you're not attempting to be, you know, I, a lot of authors, I think myself included, really work to be lyrical in some way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think only about 1% of us can actually pull it off, me not being in that 1%. Um, there is a there is a like Hemingway esque simplicity to your writing. That's just like I'm going to tell you the story. This is what the character's experiencing. Um, I've seen a lot of writers like you that have that kind of uh, direct. Do you know what I'm talking about? In a way, yes. Okay, I've seen a lot of writers like you that have that direct simplicity. Think like, oh, I need to complicate this to make it feel more literary. Hmm. And I, I want to encourage you off the top, keep your, keep your natural flow because huh. there's, there's, you've got a really good voice, like a really good um, author voice going here that I think creates the simplicity of your sentences, the like simplicity of your language creates an intimacy between the reader and the first person POV that uh, I don't want you to lose. So as we talk about little changes I want you to make, I want to make sure you hold on to that. Okay. You know, the one thing with writing in the first person POV, that word I, I just sometimes feel, am I overusing it for a while? Every sentence was I, 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 the start of it. You and do you not, you do not overuse it in this chapter. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So the one thing I'm going to hit a bunch of notes with you, but the one thing I do want you to focus on is I need to know more about how Mel, your POV character um, is interpreting the world around us. She observes a lot, but she doesn't mm -hmm. interpret a lot. And part of what you have a giant advantage of in writing in first person POV is that we get like a direct line into how this person interprets the world. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I want a little bit more of that. So for example, your opening sentence, Diane has had a bit has had a bad habit of setting ridiculous alarms on my phone. She set a 7 a.m. alarm for Saturday morning with an annoying tone when you can't sleep through. Uh, Mom gets up early and I enjoy morning talks, so I get out of bed. So you give me kind of three really interesting things about your, your, about Mel here. Diane is setting alarms on her phone. Oh, on my phone. On my, yeah. On, well, on Mel's phone. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So how does Mel feel about that? Why would Diane be setting alarms on Mel's phone? Right. Like there's a lot here to unpack oh, that yeah. by on, by giving me a little bit more about how Di how Mel feels about what Diane is doing. I don't just learn about this alarm in the phone. I also learn about Mel's relationship with Diane. Uh -huh. Okay. And Diane is a younger sister, about 14. So she is uh, likes to pull pranks on Mel. Uh, does Mel appreciate it? No, because Mel's not that kind of person. She's sort of a serious. Nice. Girl. Yeah. She mm -hmm. seems very um, thoughtful is how mm -hmm. I would describe it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very thoughtful. So I would add that here, like Diane has a bad habit of setting ridiculous alarms on my phone, period. Another one of her pranks. Oh, okay. Period. Um, another one of her pranks, period, or like another one of her pranks that she's always pulling, uh, period. Maybe, maybe at some point, you know, maybe as she grows older, she'll figure out that I don't find them very funny. Now, with those okay. two additional sentences, I've given you information about who Diane is, like extra information about Diane. And mm -hmm. I've told you about how Mel connects to Diane and okay. how she feels about Diane. Mm hmm. So like right here, you've got this other great sentence, like mom gets up early and I enjoy morning talks. So I get out of bed, right? What about morning talks? Does she enjoy? How often does this happen, right? Like mom gets up early uh, and I enjoy morning talks or mom gets up early. Typically I miss her by the time I roll out of bed, you know, she's, she's already moved on mm -hmm. to managing the family. But when mm -hmm. I am out of bed, I enjoy talking to her in the morning, there's, you know, there, it's rare that I get a one-on-one -on -one connection with her. I there's five of, kids in the family. And also the father has recently died about six months ago. So yeah, there's a lot of things happening. And I guess that's what I was trying to get to is that Mel wants her special time with mom. 
and in the morning she can get it on a Saturday morning. Yeah, I think it's I think the world building is there, right? Like, and I think I can see your like intention. We just need like another sentence or two to take it a little bit further. Does that make okay. sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like here, before I leave the room, I finger comb through my unruly brown hair and throw on a worn out cardigan over my camel sole top and boys shorts. What is, I would like a sentence here in which she reflects on how that is same or different from other girls her age. Or a sentence here on how that is same or different from Diane. Diane would never oh, okay. dream of coming out of her room. But it's like you give me a detail like this to allow me to picture her, uh -huh. which is excellent world building. But we want to take that world building the next level and give it strategic. Okay. Does that make oh, sense? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was thinking, Mel, um, she, not that she doesn't care, but she's sort of naive to the if I walk around like this, I'm fine. It's only mom and me in the morning. So, and where Diane, yeah, she's more, um, does her hair and does makeup as much as she can for 14. Yeah, so, so there is that difference between them. Yeah, so, and that would be a good difference to note here. Not because something's lacking. It's not that your description isn't enough. Your description is great. And that's what I'm saying. Like, keep the simplicity of your description, but give me a next level where it gives me insight into these people. Okay. And the insight I really care about is their relationship with one another. Okay. Right. So like if you can give me insight into how this makes her self-conscious because Diane doesn't come down this way or that, you know, she would, you know, she thinks the airs that Diane puts on are silly. Okay. Right. Or, you know, something of that <laughs> nature. Does that make sense? Yes. And I recognize you're using this to build to later in the piece. Like, I know you're telling mm -hmm. me this because mm -hmm. you're going to connect to it later. But mm -hmm. since you're putting, since you're giving space to it on the page, let's be strategic about it and give me some value in it. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Here's one more. Uh, in the same vein. After I finished in the bathroom, I stopped to check on Chick. He's sprawled across his bed with his shoes and clothes still on. At least he isn't lying in puke. That's a great detail there that tells me something about her and about Chick. This is the kind of like insight from her that I'm looking for. Okay. I want to slam the door and jar him awake. Instead, I carefully close it and go downstairs. Tell me why. Why is she carefully closing it and going downstairs? I think um, in the other, in the first chapter, you see her when Chuck, Chick comes home straight uh, drunk. She's take trying to take care of him, you know, help him into yeah. the house, help him do this and that. And so she does that in the first chapter, too. She goes around and closes all the bedroom doors so he doesn't disturb anybody. Okay. Um, and so that's what I was getting at here is that she's still is sort of taking care she's of him by closing his door. You know, she'd like to jam or slam that door, but she doesn't want to. She likes no. to do it, but she doesn't. So you can give me a little more intention here with just like three words. Instead, I carefully close the door and go downstairs because I know that's what he needs. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's right. Great. And just those like four were because I know that's mm -hmm. what he needs. That's seven words. I can't count. <laughs> because of those seven words, um, I get intention around what she's saying. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So that, that's kind of the first theme I wanted to hit with you. Oh, here's one more. Logan's truck is coming up the driveway. Why is he here this early? I watch him get out and look at Chick's car window. Oh, God, he's checking to see if Chick slept in the... Oh, God, is he checking to see if Chick slept in the car? Give me more. Why is she worried that Logan is checking to see... Is that embarrassing to her? Is she sad that Logan's wasting time? Does she wish Logan would just go away? You see, like, I can interpret oh, okay. this sentence in, like, 10 different ways. Yes. Okay. So just give me a little more. Why is she, what's behind this phrase for her? Okay. Well, no, I'm asking, like, what's behind oh, this yeah. phrase? <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, Chick is a very good friend of um, Logan's. They're, they've been friends for 11, since they were 11. I think okay. I wrote that a little bit later. Yeah, it shows um, up later. Yes. And so I guess my thinking in that, that, oh, God, is he checking to see if Chick is asleep? Um, thinking, why would he do that? But again, he's such a good friend. 
yes, he would do that. Nice. Um, it just, but it does sort of embarrass Mel that, geez, does he think my brother's such a drunk that he'd be sleeping in his own car? Nice. Um, so I would, uh, I I would add something in there about like is sleeping in his car. I might add a sentence that's like, you know, um, I wish Chick could just pull his crap together. Oh, okay. And that does it, right? Like just that little sentence gives us just a little more of intention that lets her into lets us into her mind. Okay. And it's part of the beauty of first person POV. Like that's why we love first person POV. We love it because we get this like behind the scenes of this person's perspective. So giving us just a touch more of that perspective all along, I think is gonna elevate your work a lot. Does okay. that make sense? Yes, she's also worried, and I was sort of wondering if I could put this in there, that with his drinking, that he is not going to get into college and not get scholarships. So I don't know if I could work that in there or that's, just not, you know, that, and that's know. another concern of, her, uh, of hers. Uh, they don't have that much money for him to go to college. He has to depend on scholarships. Yeah. So there's two types of, of reflection that you're kind of dealing with with first person POV, there's immediate reflection of what's happening right now. So everything we've talked about so far has been an immediate reflection. He's looking in the car window. Oh God, is he checking to see chips in the car? This is the immediate reason that I'm concerned about that. Okay. I'm getting dressed. Here's my immediate thought on why me getting dressed this way is different than anything else. I'm going to go downstairs and see mom. Here's my immediate reflection on mom. It is possible to take some of these and have like deeper reflections on like, like, so what you're describing would be like an extra paragraph here where it'd be mm -hmm. like, oh God, he's checking to see if chick slept in the car, question mark. And then you want to add a sentence about like, you know, I wish chick could just pull his self together. I hate that, you know, his friends have to take care of him like this. Oh, that's then you, yeah. then you'd give because, us, you know, I want, oh, excuse me. I sort of wonder, um, Oh, what was I going to say that? Oh, never mind. I can't remember what I was going to say. No, no, it's all good. <laughs> but then you'd give us like, if you wanted to do that deeper level of reflection that I would call like a step away from Chick being in his car to a reflection on Chick's drinking as a whole. Does that make sense? Well, those? Okay. Yes. And I was wondering there because she, you know, she's so worried about Logan um, checking on looking into Chick's car. Would she think about all those other things? Would she think about his, you know, going to college or is that? She might, you know, that's, and that's really your call. And as you mm -hmm. like, as the author, and as she, if you give her that deeper thought, it communicates something to us about her as a character. Okay. Right. So, so she it is concerned. She, she's a very caring person. Yeah. And it depends on how, um, anxious you want her to feel how worried you want her to feel like mm -hmm. you know anxious worried characters are going to think a lot are going to spin a lot more on the kind of future stuff um mm -hmm. thoughtful concerned characters tend to be more present in like uh, present needs um mm -hmm. and it's not saying that they can't think about the future it's, mm -hmm. it just takes a little bit different tinge but if you mm -hmm. want, the reason I'm calling that a second step of reflection is because it doesn't directly have to do with the car. It's triggered by the car. So she sees Logan look at the car. She has an immediate reflection on last night. That immediate reflection could trigger that second level of reflection that's about Chick's future. Okay. And then that would be its own paragraph. Okay. And it would be her saying something like, you know, oh God, he's checking to see if he slept in the car. Um, she wished her friends didn't have to care about this. Next paragraph down, you know, I I wish that Chick could really pull this together. He's got so much writing on it. You know, he's so smart and talented, but he's throwing all of his college chances away. And it's not like okay. mom's going to be able to pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's mm -hmm. like a deeper, like the second level of reflection. I If you do it, the there is an artful balance here. And part of the art is defining your own voice as an author. It is possible to have those second reflections be too much. Okay. And the, the way you'll know is, so that we're now seven, we're six paragraphs in that we've read so far, and we, we don't have any dialogue yet, which is fine. It's moving very well. 
you're introducing characters, you're doing really good world building, and you're doing world building in a personal way. So it's all it's all solid. You only get about eight though. <laughs> and after about eight, <laughs> the reader is going to start to skim. Okay. So if knowing that those secondary touch reflections are going to require their own paragraph, you okay. have to be strategic with them because if you start piling too many paragraphs on, the reader feels disconnected. Okay. And part of what's making this work is that you're, you're, world building is describing the present moment you've kept me in the present the whole time she's waking up she's combing her fingers through her hair she's going downstairs it's like i'm watching her in a movie those secondary reflections tend to pull us out of the present so that we're like looking at the scene as a whole and if you have and those are the ones that can really start to build up paragraphs and make your work feel um trudgy okay. where you're like marching through the marsh so mm -hmm. if you if you have too many to where you've got more than eight paragraphs with nobody talking to each other or nobody directly interacting with each other your work will start to feel um you know like you're walking through a swamp and readers will skim till they get to the dialogue does mm -hmm. that make sense okay. yes because i do that when people start doing too many details it's like right. We all do it. Yeah. We're like, all right, when are we getting to the talking? When are we getting yeah. to the talking? Yeah. We all do it. And it's funny. Um, yeah. It's funny. I, like, I didn't, until I started coaching writers, I didn't realize how much I did that as a reader. But I started looking at like great writers. I started like reading, um, like, started forcing myself to read, you know, Pulitzer Prize winners and, people mm -hmm. that are really lauded as like this is a wonderful writer and i realized like oh this is a difference between great writers and the rest of us is that great writers keep us in the scene and they use dialogue to keep us there and they don't do these big you know giant reflection pools like we like to do because we think mm -hmm. i think the temptation is to think that like doing these secondary reflections brings depth to your work and it does but it, you get so deep you drown the reader <laughs> so we have to like keep the reader present and moving through the scene okay. and so i say all that to say you're doing a really good job of it okay i don't want you to start adding a bunch of secondary reflections because it'll bog down your work Okay. Um, so be very strategic about when you add them. Yeah. Um, okay. So then we get our first conversation between uh, Logan and Mel. And it's really great. Again, I love the simplicity of your dialogue back and forth. You're not like weighing me down with a bunch of inner thought. You're just letting them talk. So um, he says, the way you wrote it, he says, quiet house. He says back to me, you the only one up? Yep, making breakfast. He nudges me. Move over, I'll help. Is he still alive? Oh, okay. So I want to break here. Because they're, he's, they're having kind of an intimate moment with just the two of them. And you're going to hint to romantic overtones in a couple minutes. Like un, un, un taking advantage of rom romantic overtones. So I, I would like a I would like a break here and let her respond, even if it's non-verbally, just to get one more exchange in here. Okay. Every time um you have those exchanges, did you ever play the game Hot Potato? Is <laughs> it where like you know they play the music and you throw the the bean bag back and forth or the ball? Uh -huh. Um and as as the game goes, people pass it faster and faster. That's mm -hmm. how dialogue exchanges work. So we get you know, one exchange here, and then you had two exchanges, and then you moved into into more um, kind of movement around the room. If we can get this into three exchanges, we build just a little bit more in intimacy and energy between them. Oh, so, okay. You know, if you can have like quiet house, he says back to me, you're the only one up. Um, yep, making breakfast. He nudges me, move over, I'll help. Um, you know, maybe even just like a slight non-verbal here where it's like i move over to give him space okay. is he still alive he asks i don't know i lie to him so you can see how like just adding that little exchange creates just a touch more intimacy between them 
Okay. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can find those when you're writing, Carol. Whenever you're jamming two topics together, move over, I'll help, and is he still alive? It's a good spot to give them a break so the other person can respond. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Again, this is all really great. I love they start kind of cooking together. Um, this is just me playing with language. You'd use the word griddle a lot. So I was like, I'll try to do something okay. without griddle. But again, yeah. that's not that's not wrong. Like mm -hmm. it's just that's just me messing around. Um that's fine. <laughs> yeah. This is you have this interesting thought she has here that really is on the verge of telling me something deep. Um, I just need a touch more. So uh, he hits the spoon against the glass bowl and lowers the heat. His fingers tap out of rhythm. Why is he so nervous? One more week, then school starts. Ready for your junior year, he asks. I'm not looking forward to it. Last year, uh, we'll, last year we'll all be together. To avoid conversation and looking stupid, I walk over to the fridge. So that to avoid conversation and looking stupid she's telling me something about how she interacts with him but it's, what did you mean by that because it's not quite landing yet oh and i think that was it if she talks to him more that you know she'll flub around with words she says says or says the wrong thing and so on but i also was thinking that she all of a sudden realizes what she has on is a little like uncomfortable in the situation Okay, so you got to tell me that because that's important. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's killing you is this word conversation because it's such okay. a general word. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, maybe like before I before I start stuttering and can't find the words I want to say, mm -hmm. making me look mm -hmm. stupid, I walk over to the fridge and stick my head inside, take my okay. time to study the milk jug. If you want to bring in the she's uncomfortable with what she's wearing here, I would make that a whole second sentence. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But oh. then again, I was thinking that's sort of part of her personality that she really wouldn't think about that until her mother says. Um, yeah, I like how you have first. it right. Yeah, I like how you have it right now that she doesn't okay. realize until he looks at her and then she's okay. like, oh, crap. I wouldn't add it here. If you wanted to, it would be a, an additional sentence. Yeah. No, I sort of like what you said about just making her uncomfortable because of the things that she might say yeah to him i think that's good yeah and then here's here is where you bring it in he doesn't reply i turn my head in case I, I didn't hear his answer and find him staring at me i wouldn't make it clear staring at my chest okay um his cheeks tinge pink he clears his throat and turns back to his task but she has her back to him now because she's in the refrigerator so i took it out he's scaring at staring at her butt or her legs or whatever yeah Either way, okay. whatever he's staring okay. at, make it clear. Okay. okay. My head bounces against the refrigerator shelving. I'm so embarrassed. And I would add here, uh, because you have her embarrassed up here about what she might say, we need to classify this embarrassment as a different type okay. of embarrassment. I'm so okay. embarrassed about what I'm wearing. And I might add a add a sentence about like, you know, mom wouldn't have cared. Like if it were, I was planning for it just to be me and mom, right? Like sure. uh -huh. just to make it just to bring out a little more clarity about her intention of feeling. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, okay. So this is good. He notices that she's kind of beat up a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is another place where I want to let him respond. So you had, okay. he takes the milk from me. What happened to your hand? He gently turns my bandage over and looks up at my face. When he's, if this is going to have romantic overtones later when he's touching her bandaged hand here tell me how that makes her feel oh, okay um are there going to be romantic overtones between these two in the book uh yes more so on his side than her side okay so i need to know that here when okay. he touches her you know that she's not romantically inclined at this okay. point um yeah, he turns my bandage hand over and looks up at my face. Mel, I, I took it. You had what happened, Mel? I took out the what happened and just gave him the explanation of her, her name. Okay. It's more, that's just more an ear choice. You know, if you like the what happened, put it, put it back. Mm -hmm. And then you had, never mind, we'll talk about it later. I'm never going to tell him what happened. So this is a big, like, never mind. 
I might have her recoil here. Because at in our mind's eye, he's still holding her hand. Oh, okay. So when she says never mind, I might have her pull back. Mm -hmm. I would let him respond to never mind with something like, Hey, you need to tell me. Like who okay. did that to you? Mm -hmm. And then have her say, like, we'll talk about it later. I'm never gonna tell him what happened. I like the contrast between the vocalization and the inner thought, by the way. That's okay. a nice technique. Okay. Mateo, can you, can you flip those around and have that inner thought first? Yeah, or totally. You, you can okay. totally flip them. You can do it any way you want. What I like about this, <laughs> if you have the inner thought, well, I guess it doesn't matter. I, it just depends because on what it's you later want to on in some of the things when I do write, I sort of give her the inner thought first. Like, no, I'm not going to do this. And then she's like, okay, yes, I'll do yeah, that. I don't know that there's a right way to do it or a wrong way to do it. I think, it, I think you just trust your ear, okay. right? Like read it to yourself and decide like, do I like it like that? Or do I like it the other way? And then trust your gut in what, in what it feels like. Um, I think uh, it's really, I think it's easy to, for us to get like stuck on like, what's the right way or what's the rule to mm -hmm. do this. And a mm -hmm. lot of times you just got to trust your gut and what you like and what you don't like you know mm -hmm. um artists as artists in a way we're expressing our own tastes for things so you're ex when you write something like this you're expressing you know your taste for how things are written does that make sense yes mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um Okay, so Mateo comes in. Logan, Logan's here. Mateo says he comes barely in the kitchen hitting my legs. Logan takes a step back. Good he's not caller. Could have been disastrous. That's that's funny, right? Like this is a funny moment where the little kid comes running in. Mm -hmm. Logan needs to say something to her about like, I haven't forgotten. Because they're having this intimate, serious moment here. It's interrupted by the little kid. Mm -hmm. Tonal shift is good. But he needs to know that a tonal shift is happening. Okay. Does that make sense? Otherwise, yeah. he seems like a monster and that like all it took was a four-year-old kid <laughs> to distract him from the fact that this girl he likes has a bruise on her face. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. That's so true. have him note it. Be like, good, mm -hmm. he's not a taller, could have been disastrous. Let her respond, right? Like, yeah, I laugh. Thankful mm -hmm. we've moved off the last topic. You know, and then he can say. Mm -hmm. He can say, hey, I'm going to hold you to that later. Okay. Mom walks in the kitchen carrying a smiling Thomas. So, like, give him, give them one more exchange here to transition us emotionally into the chaos of the whole family showing up. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, when mom comes into the room with Thomas, you now have mom, Thomas, Mateo, um, Logan and Mel all in the room together. Five person conversation. You got to get really clear about who's talking. Oh, okay. In a five you know, and I did that to begin with. I did have, actually, first of all, I had Logan saying that and then I shifted it to Mel. How did I see that? Yeah, <laughs> so who is, who is Pancakes Are Almost Done, kiddo? Whose line is that? Uh, Mel. Okay, who's moving the chair? He moves the chair over the kitchen island and stands on it. Okay, so let's do some conversational spacing here. Pancakes okay. are almost done, kiddo. You know, I say. Tomas moves the chair to the kitchen island, reaching for legs, um, for the eggs. Who says, but you can crack some for Chick? She does. No, does. Okay. But you can crack some for Chick, right? Like, um, that way you're kind of, putting it all together does that make sense yes and then you need you have her saying but you can crack some for chick and then you have her saying mateo want to help because she's saying both of these they either need to be on the same line to let us know they both come from her okay or you need to have something happen in between them right does that make sense Yes, yes. But mm -hmm. when you get into this, any conversation with three or more people, we have to get real specific and real clear about who's doing what. For the rest of the piece, I know who's saying everything. You do a great job. This okay. was the only place where I was like, okay, here we need to pause a little bit and talk about what's going on. Okay, um, okay so Diane then shows up. They have this encounter 
a, around this pre-encounter in the hallway where Mel is running upstairs to change clothes because mom has said something and they mentioned that Logan's here. Later, you're going to tell me that Diane gets, I get, um, it's pretty obvious I get flustered around him, meaning Logan, but not as bad as Diane. I need to hurry so I can watch her shenanigans. So there's two things that happen in this paragraph. You tell me Diane's going to get flustered around Logan and there's going to be shenanigans. So now as the reader, I'm like, I love shenanigans. Let's have shenanigans. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna warn you, the problem is I don't get to see the shenanigans. But now I, at first I thought your LOL meant, oh, you like that. And then I thought, oh no, he's saying that. Yes, I want to see that. I want to see the shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> so up here though, before we even get to that passage, I would like for you to start hinting to me here that Diane's gonna get flustered around Logan. So Okay. Logan's here and look what I have on. Have her say, Oh, I get it now. Um, cover up your boobs, right? And then you could add, like, or just stay upstairs and I'll I'll entertain Logan Ow. <laughs> without you, right? Like, or you know, or when she's like, Logan's here, and then break this up and be like, wait, what? Logan's here? You know. Okay. <laughs> Um, you know, she said as she immediately began fixing her hair, with, mm -hmm. right? Like something that shows us like, oh, Diane has something going on here for Logan, mm -hmm. right? And then it's, then if you set it up here and then you can have, sorry, after she says that, you can have Mel say like, yeah, and look what I have on. Okay. Right. And then she can be like, oh, I get it now. Go cover up your boobs. Right. Like, but give us this beat here where we see her flustered by Logan to set up this line where you're like, she gets flustered by Logan. Mm -hmm. And I need to hurry so I can watch the shenanigans. Now, you make this promise to me as a reader. And now I need to see shenanigans. Okay. But down here, you cheat me and you summarize the shenanigans. Mom placed a huge roll of paper towels on the edge of the counter. Before everyone can sit down, Chick comes trudging to the kitchen. His bloodshot eyes glance all the way. He hangs his head and moves to the coffee maker. At the, from this point forward, it's a very serious conversation about, you know, drunk Chick. Like, drunk Chick change, <laughs> or hungover Chick changes the feeling of the room. Yes. So, up here, I want I want shenanigans. You promised okay. <laughs> So I want to see Diane downstairs. I want to see her trying to flirt with Logan. I want to see Logan making small talk with mom instead. I want to mm -hmm. see Mel giving Tomas and um, Mateo some pancakes, right? Like I want to see the whole scene. Does that okay. make sense? Yes. Uh -huh. And then when Chick shows up and everything slows down again, we'll feel it more. Okay, sure. Does that make sense? If you, yes, if you, sure if you give me the shenanigans, mm -hmm. then when we get serious, the seriousness will have more weight to it. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I want to see in here in this mm -hmm. in this paragraph you've written. I want to see this scene and I want to see Diane being absurd. I don't want to see Logan get uncomfortable. I want to see all of it. Ah, okay. Um I want mom asking some questions to Logan about what happened last night. I want Logan not wanting to talk about it, right? Like I want to see all of that. Okay. This is another one of those places where I need more insight. When she turned back to him, she wiped away tears. So mom sounded very authoritative, but she struggled to get the words out. When she turned her back to him, she wiped away the tears. Man, that's a powerful moment because you've already set up mom as this very authoritative, caring presence. Mm -hmm. How does how does Mel feel about the fact that mom is crying when Chick comes downstairs? What does this do to seeing mom this way? What does that do to Mel? Right? Because that's what mm -hmm. I care about. I care about what Mel is experiencing. Mel is my vehicle character. I'm mm -hmm. following Mel through the whole story, right? Like I'm having this journey with Mel. So what is what does Mel feel about mom crying? And like, because that tells me how I should feel about mom. You know, in the in the scene before, it, uh, mom is involved with what taking care of Chick too. So I guess okay. for me, I knew that she felt 
that way because in yeah. the scene before she was very flustered with her son and you know she's trying to be more authoritative now and tell him yes you are going to work you're going to do this and you're going to do that yeah i liked it it's a great it's a great conversation between them okay and i love what you're saying i like that i get to see mom in these in this dynamic way what i want here though is how mel feels about mom okay not how mom feels Mm -hmm. I get how mom feels. I want to know how Mel feels. You've okay. written it well enough that I understand that like mom's kind of falling apart and at, at her okay. wits end with her son. Like I get that. I okay. want to know what Mel's reflection is on this moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that make okay. sense? Yes. Yes. It's a weird, you know, we latch on to different characters when we read, there's going to be like some of your readers are really going to love Diane. Some of your readers are really going to love Logan. Some of your readers are really going to love mom because it's in first person POV. We are going to be hungry at all times for how Mel understands what's happening. So we will always be asking, what does Mel think about this? And okay. that's what I want here. I want Mel's reflection on what's happening. Um, because the, the stuff between chicken and mom is fantastic. Uh, it's a really, it's really strong. Um, so here, uh, like I was telling you up above, I'm going to use some conversational spacing okay. to make it seem, even though Thomas doesn't speak, and I'll read through this in a second, but even though Thomas doesn't speak, I'm going to space down this line as if it's his vocalization okay. to give this section a conversational feel, right? So you write... I want more syrup, Thomas says. He reaches across the table, blocking over his juice. Space down. Shit. Chick scoots his chair back. Can't you even sit down at the table without spilling something, he yells. And then you had on the same line, Thomas's lips scrunched together. Nice, Diane says. So I'm going to space down and give Thomas his own line. He okay. yells. Space down. Thomas's lips scrunched together, and he cries. Space down nice diane says she jumps the paper towel uh she jumps and grabs the paper towel this is why mom places them on the counter and then i might oh thomas spills but he's only four and is in constant motion i'm gonna space down again you're an ass uh you know that chick diane says now even though nice and you're an ass you know that chick is both diane you have this reflection in here that like spaces these two out so i'm gonna go ahead and space it down you can, oh, okay. see, you can see on the page and how I read it, how that gives you more of a feeling of a back and forth happening in the conversation. Does okay. that make sense? And yes. that's, it's like we were talking about earlier, those paragraphs that you have at the first of the, of the, of this piece, they, um, they can feel like we're kind of marching through a swamp. So when mm -hmm. we have these big cast interactions, which are really fantastic to read. We want to make them feel as conversational as possible. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any any questions about that? Anything? Oh, no, I just was wondering, are there too many characters? No, I love it. In this? Okay. I love it. And you're managing them really well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's the hardest thing about having this many characters is letting me know what everybody's doing. Okay. And you're doing a great job of that. It's a really, I loved this scene. Um, it's really, I loved it so much. I want you to give more. Okay. Um, this modulation here where Diane calls chicken ass and is angry with him. This is, if you have Diane flirting with Logan up here, this voice modulation is going to land bigger. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. It's just like we were sure. talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to set up these big emotional changes by really, um, really, uh, giving me lighter emotion up top and then these heavier emotions will, will ring out stronger okay. um yeah uh this is this is a great emotional moment i just wanted more of it so i added some words in here mm -hmm. um because okay. this is this moment where diane reveals what happened last night she mm -hmm. says you know chick did did say shit first and last night he comes home drunk again wakes up the entire house and so I'm just adding some words to make it sound more conversational. And then when Mel covers for him, comma, he knocks her down, puts her right on her ass. I yell and I and I get yelled at. It's just not fair. 
right? Like, so I'm just adding these phrases that don't add any emphasis. Like they don't add any content to it, mm -hmm. but when we want to add emphasis to something, when we're telling, like when we're telling a story to a friend that we want to make a big deal out of, we put extra words in. Okay. And so I'm just throwing extra words in to get, mm -hmm. to get the story built out a little bit more. Sure. Um, you know, in the word, when she says again, is there a way to show that she's emphasizing that? Or did you get that out of the conversation? I got it because you you okay. said, you know, Chick says shit first. And last night he comes home drunk, period. Again, period. Okay. That Those pauses make me stop on it. Some authors will put it in italics. Um, you know, I'm not a fan of italics. I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Some authors are capitalize it. You know, you can do that too. But that tends to communicate yelling. Oh, so yes. I like how you have it spaced here as this like sentence fragment that stands alone. It gives it its own weight and emphasis. Okay. Um, yeah. So then down here, uh, how are you feeling so far about the about the piece of the notes? Yes. Very good. Very okay. good. Good. Yeah, and this other thing about Diane, the next sentence is because um, when all the commotions going on in the first scene, Diane pretends to be sleeping, but she's really not. So she does hear everything that's going okay. on. Okay, so this is and, a and reference thought to the she last didn't know. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. All right. So you can ignore my note here. Um, that make that clears that up really well. Okay. Um, okay. Here. <laughs> the don't call me bud my name's spider-man a whole new argument starts between mateo who is six and tomas i want to i want to see that okay that's what i these big cast conversations this is what i'm here for i'm here for the shenanigans and the nonsense right like this is okay. what i want to see and it gives me a feeling of the family right like so don't call me bud my name's spider-man right your name's not spider-man mateo said Right, like Tomas shoot shot fake webs at Mateo and said, "Shut yeah. up! You don't know what you're talking about." Mateo was like, "Mom, tell him his name's Thomas." Uh, tell and him that's his not Thomas. too much. I no, guess I was great. thinking if I put that in there, that was just too much. Okay, no, good. that's what we want. We want to okay. see the family interacting with each other. We want to see this like playful kind of banter. It it doesn't give us more content, right? Like we're not learning content about the family what we're learning is is emotional texture uh -huh. okay. in the relationships between them and again you know it'll when logan steps in to like make it better okay you can be smiling man but thomas is a really neat name can i call you thomas if you show them fighting here again this him stepping in makes him feel like an even cooler guy does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, like, if you build up the emotions, it in the fight, in the like playful fighting, then this moment of Logan making peace makes us go like, <laughs> I do really like Logan. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Oh, and I see what you did. You spaced that out too. Yeah, I, I wasn't spaced sure it out. how to write that. Yes. Yeah. Again, this is that conversational spacing, right? Like, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can be Spider-Man, but Thomas is a really neat name. Can I call you Thomas? Space down. You like my name? Space down. Logan nods his head. Because that's Logan's response in the conversation. So give it its okay. own line. Space down. Okay, uh, you can call me Thomas Spider-Man. Right? I might add Mateo in here. Mateo shook his head as he walked away with his plants that play the painting. Okay. Oh, brother. Right? Like, give me one more. <laughs> Just like note from like the younger, the older brother of what's going on. Like, yeah. Um, anyway, but that kind of like r rapport building with the reader by giving okay. us interactions with fun interactions with the character. You can see that like by adding that, well, hopefully you can see by adding that, it really tells us more about Logan. Okay. Right? And it's, I it's, did want it to, to do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a dumb argument between mm -hmm. Thomas and Mateo. And you're right. When you're writing it, it feels like, what am I doing here? I'm not actually adding anything to the plot. Mm -hmm. I'm not. But what you're doing is giving me emotional texture so that later I learn more about Logan and the family. Okay. And the fact that Chick doesn't step in. And the fact that Mel just watches it happen. Logan's adding something here to this family that's missing. 
and it's mm -hmm. it, you know it's an important thing to understand about logan the family and all the characters okay um i really think as you write logan and mel moore you're probably going to build out that relationship more because they fit certain character traits complement each other and logan mm -hmm. and mel are going to complement each other yeah. really well. and in my first draft that's what i did is every time she does have a problem she does depend on logan mm -hmm. to be you know to walk her through it it makes perfect sense because he is mm -hmm. kind strength and she is compassionate and thoughtful and so you can see how the the kindness and the compassion makes them a wonderful fit together okay even though he's strong and she's thoughtful right and those kind of pull apart from each other it's mm -hmm. the compassion and kindness that that unite them it it's going to play for a really nice romance line for you okay. um yeah so here then chick and logan walk towards the kitchen door logan pushes chick through you haven't built logan has been kind the entire time now he's ignored chick but you haven't given me any indication until this point that logan is pissed okay so i would go if you want to keep this moment i would go back and as you're adding these places where like mateo and tomas are going to talk to each other mm -hmm. have chick be like can you two just cut it out and before logan jumps in have him say something to chick oh, okay. and be like be like, just drink your coffee. Okay. Yeah, because I right. do have just one time in there where he slaps him upside the head. Yeah, it, and mm -hmm. it, he hits him upside the head, but that can also mm -hmm. be like a friendly gesture. That makes oh, sense? Okay. Like, So mm -hmm. we need to know it. Or when you add this, like, Diane flirting with with Logan and then Chick showing up and changing the tone of the room, mm -hmm. Note, have Mel notice that Logan is glaring at Chick. Oh, okay. like, sure, we sure. don't we don't need it heavy handed we don't need a lot of it just little mm -hmm. touches that build to this moment so that when logan finally gets chick alone we get this thing okay. and then you you set up for me that mom and mel are going to watch what do you think is going to happen mom she shrugs we both look out the window and then you summarize this thing that I really want to see outside okay. a lot of shouting, cussing, pushing, and Chick gets a punch to his cheek. That sentence, I want to see all of that. Okay. Right? Sure. Outside, mm -hmm. thinking we can't see, you know, Logan pushes Chick and yells, what in the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> right? Like, you Chick know, That's a good point because I'm writing YA and I've read a lot of it um, and using the word fuck is that can I keep it in there? I've had I've had people say know. no. You should take it out and you know let the reader. There is an audience that will be very angry if you put that word in there. Yeah. So That's you exactly might say, "What in the hell?" What we, you said. Yeah. You okay. might say, "Like, what in the hell are you thinking?" Okay. There is a certain audience that's like, "If I see the f word, I'm not reading this book." Okay. Um, so you, you know, for kids, yeah. that seems to be just a a normal. I think, it yeah, it depends what anything. kids you're writing to, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, my wife and I walk in a lot of different worlds and like our kind of evangelical homeschool friends, if they if they heard the F word, their their ears might melt off of their heads. But mm -hmm. the um the inner city crew that I grew up with, that that word was as common as the and and, right? Like we just it was just it part, is, of, our, yeah. just just part of our vocabulary. Yeah. So <laughs> Um, and you know, you know in the in the first scene i do have chick saying that when he's drunk you know get the fuck away from me do this or whatever if you and use so it I, the thing is if you use it once you cross the line and you might as well use it all the time okay okay right like and there is a yeah there's a thing in business um in which they call it deciding who your customer is not and so the idea is like I'm going to do things. And if you have a problem with this thing, that indicates to both you and me that you are not my customer. Okay, sure. Right? So using the F word is kind of one of those things we do as writers. That's like, I'm writing for this group of people, not this group of people. Mm -hmm. And the thing is not using the F word does not draw a line. Using the F word draws a line. So 
you got to kind of determine like, you know, what, who are you writing for? Is that a line you want to draw? If it's not a line you want to draw, just take it out, right? Like what in the hell were you thinking is, can be, especially if it's followed by really fierce body language can be as emotionally impactful as using the F word. Okay. It becomes about realism and how real do you want these people to be, right? Like would a kid, you? so you're painting a single mother home in a in a middle class to lower middle class family um mm -hmm. in which um the oldest son is having alcohol issues like drinking issues so you know mm -hmm. is that family going to be concerned about the language they're using should you have bleeped out my language for saying that? No, not at all. So okay. no, I I cuss like, oh. on, I cuss on this podcast all the time. Um, so <laughs> okay, I, you know, <laughs> terminating my clients. Um, but yeah, so it's uh, but there's that um, you know, there's that question of like realistically, if they have a religious background, they might be more on their p's and q's about language at least when mom is present. But if they don't, if they're a religious or, you know, um, culturally religious, but not devout, mm -hmm. they're probably not going to realistically, they're probably going to be cussing. So it just depends on like uh, one, what your readership is. Do you mm -hmm. want to limit your readership or not? Okay. And okay. two, okay. how does, how does realism feel? Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Like, mm -hmm. are you okay if if you know realistically this family would be cussing up a storm, that this family is like the shameless family in the TV show that aired on Showtime, where they're like every <laughs> third word is a cuss word. If that's what you're going for for the family, then you probably need to include that language. If that's not what you're going for, then you probably need to not include that language. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. But as you make that kind of decision, you're really making a decision about your reader. Okay. And who okay. your reader is. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it, all that to say, though, I have to see this scene. Mm -hmm. I have to see it and I have to see mom and Mel talk about it as it's happening. I have to see mom going like, go out there and, and get between them. And you, I have to see Mel being like, no way. And I have to see Diane yeah, come up okay. and be like, I have to see Diane come up to the window and be like, oh, a fight. Right. Like <laughs> I need to see all of them okay. responding to it. Cause this is a great scene here. Again, Logan kind of plays off as a hero mm -hmm. here. And you're really building this character who's taking kind of a father figure role in the family that honestly, the trope in these stories is typically Logan is going to end up overstepping at some point and he's going to take too much of a hero role and mel is going to have to tell him to back off i don't want you oh, mm -hmm. to do that like that's the trope you don't have to go that way uh, but i do actually that is a scene where he gets a little too involved with what's happening and she's like no i don't, yeah. I don't want you and help. she's like this is this isn't your family this is mm -hmm. my family yeah mm -hmm. and that's that's a common kind of theme in these of like how does insiders versus outsiders and you know logan thinks he's an insider but he's not family and so okay. there's a common kind of um theme that runs through that does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah which is great like you know saying that there's a common theme is actually a good thing because when we're dealing with story we want the adjacent possible we want what's expected and surprising so when we meet a character like logan like this we're like oh I know what the themes are, like subconsciously as readers, we're like, I know what the themes are. I wonder where this goes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it's great. Um, all right. So, but I have, you have to give me that last scene and I need mm -hmm. mom and Mel and Diane all commenting mm -hmm. on it. This is yeah. like the Thomas Mateo scene, but like times five, like I need it. I, this has to be its own thing. Okay. And when chick gets decked, I need Diane to, explode yeah. with glee right like and <laughs> i need yeah yeah and i need mom looking at diane and be like cut it out and mm -hmm. i need mel like nervous that somebody's gonna hear nervous the chick is okay mm -hmm. worried about logan and what's gonna happen next to logan and then you probably need logan you know reaching down to pick chick up 
Like that, you need okay. this, like, because again, these scenes, it's not just about showing us the scene. It's about telling us who these characters are to each other. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. Any, any? Okay, I have to apologize for anybody who's watching this that I use the F word. Like Carol, I, Carol, I'm telling you, I, I fucking, I fucking use it all the time. You don't have to apologize. Yeah, okay. Um, is it? <laughs> like I, I say, and I use it all the time. Just like, that in this yeah. piece, I thought. Um, I live with teenagers, and it's like, oh, sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, enough, yeah. you know. Like I, hey, I games, and that's the only thing I hear. I grew up in, so this is a funny story. There's my, and I get to pump my high school if I say this. So on Hulu, I grew up in, in Algiers, which is a neighborhood in inner city New Orleans. And <laughs> in Hulu, uh, the the like television streaming company, they just released a TV show about my high school Ooh, called wow. Algiers America. Wow. And I was super excited. It's about the football team. I played years before the football team they're filming, but it's about the high school football team that mm -hmm. I'm an alma mater of. And mm -hmm. I was I was so pumped about it. And I'm watching it in the kitchen with my wife. And she grew up in um, Baltimore County, like north of Baltimore City, in a more kind of suburban environment. And so we're watching the show, and the coaches – the players, the parents, f this, f that, everything is. That. The coaches are are talking to high school students, and they're like, "You need to f and do, and you need to get your head out of your ass, and you need to." And she finally looks at me, and she's like, "They cuss at those kids so much," and I start laughing. I'm like, "This was just life. Like this is just how we all talked." And so mm -hmm. it's um, I think so much of this has to do with, you know, where you come from, and. Okay where what what world are you painting right like mm -hmm. so all that to say it was a funny moment where i realized that my wife and i came from different worlds and <laughs> the world that i came from would have been highly offensive to the world that she came from whereas for me that was just how mm -hmm. how life was sure. like, this is mm -hmm. what we did yeah um i remember most of our high school cheers that we cheered from the stands as like a student body involved cuss words like it was just you know this is and i was a good church kid like you know it's that's that's just what that's just how we talked um anyway uh anything else about the piece you want to talk about before we uh before i stop uh, well i don't think so you, you gave me a lot of good ideas good you you know, sometimes i think i have those things in the back of my head but it's like do i really need them on paper and you showed me why yeah and it's there's that. your family's great i this is a family I want to spend time with. Okay. Does that make sense? Like this is a family mm -hmm. I want to be like, yeah, I would hang out with this crew for a full novel. So you've got a good, you got a great working family here, even a series. Like you got a great working family here. Okay. Um, so nice work with that. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop the recording and we can, uh, we can talk a little bit more. Sure.